What is up, YouTube? Vanthros here, coming at you with a long overdue RPG Maker VX Ace tutorial. And today we are going to cover, uh, it's going to be part of a larger request. And if I had a dollar for every request I got for an advanced tutorial with camera movement and people talking and multiple movement, I mean, I, it's the number one thing that is requested. So. Um, rather than try to do it all at once and make a 45 minute video, I'm going to kind of break it up into smaller pieces and let you put it together however you want. Um, so we've already done some tutorials on cutscenes, but today we're going to cover scrolling text. And we're going to cover the scroll map command, which is what uh, most people think of uh, when they think about the camera movement in the game. So before we get started with that, I just want to, I have to mention it. Uh, I, you know, we just went over 400 subscribers uh, today, which is the 26th of June. Um, I can't tell you how excited I am and how grateful I am for all the support uh, that you guys are giving me um, and all the feedback as well. I mean, it's really just um, overwhelming how awesome it is. I, I never expected to get 50 subscribers, uh, much less 400, and that's the, that is the truth. So without any ado whatsoever, let's get started. Um, uh, before we do anything with, uh, you know, before we start, actually, uh, I need you to guys to make sure that you go over here to the database and make sure your transparent on is checked uh, for the, for, you know, for your cutscene. We don't want to see the character uh, in this case, so just make sure that is checked because that's something that a lot of people forget to check and then they wonder why their character's still there. Um, also, uh, make a couple maps. Um, I'm using three. I'm using just a black, uh, an empty map uh, to kind of host our scrolling text, which I'll talk about more in a moment. Um, we're, I'm going to use this ruins map, I'll zoom out a little bit, uh, to kind of move the camera around and show you how that works. And then I have a town map that our cutscene is going to end in. And then the player is going to take control of the main character. So, uh, you know, let's uh, let's get started. So we'll kind of zoom in a little bit here. Uh, make sure you have event editing mode on. And pick a tile, it doesn't matter which one. I'd like to pick one that's out of the way. And I'll just hit scroll. We'll name this one scroll text. Of course, you want to make sure that this is an auto run event. And just like any cutscene, we're going to start out with some music. Um, it doesn't matter which one you use. Um, I already have one that I know I'm going to use. It's theme 2. And I'm going to turn down the pitch a little bit so it's a little slower. So we're going to start with that. And then we're going to use the scrolling text. Now to get to the scroll text, it's on the first page. And it's right here. Show scrolling text. This text will move from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen. Think of the credits at the end of a movie. Some games use a scrolling text to kind of tell the story. Uh, you know, so just type in whatever you want here. I'm just going to type in blah, blah, blah. Scrolling text. And just like the regular show text command, this little margin tick here is very misleading. Um, uh, it's never right for some reason. I think the margin is right about here where my mouse is. Um, so just you're going to have to eyeball it and use the preview to make sure everything is in the box. Uh, speed, the higher the higher the number, the faster the text scrolls. You can disable fast forward. Normally, you can use uh, the player can use the confirm button to make the text scroll faster. Uh, we'll leave all this alone. I think the speed is fine, especially for the purposes of this tutorial. So, uh, there it is. Uh, it's pretty easy. Um, not much to really worry about there. So, next we are going to um, put in a transfer player event uh, because we want to move to the ruins. And the ruins is where we're going to get into the camera movement. So, I don't know. Pick, pick a spot. It doesn't really matter. I'll zoom out a little bit. Um, it doesn't really matter. Let's start here in the graveyard. Wherever you want to go. It's up to you. So just double click there. 
and there we go. So we have the transfer player event done, and then the only thing to do now is to uh, close out this event, and we do that with the self switch as usual. So go to the first page, control self switch, leave all this alone. We want self switch A, and we want it to turn on, and uh, create a blank new event page with the self switch A being on, and that event is done, and. Let's, uh, we'll do a play test now just to make sure the first part we did correctly. So we'll do that. So there's the text. We make it go faster. And then we're at the ruins. So that part of the cutscene is done. Um, you know. And like I said before, it doesn't have to be ruins. It doesn't have to be anything uh, crazy. But um, a couple things, that th uh, one, one major thing to consider when you create these maps, okay? Um, in this case, I, uh, I'll open the map properties. None of these are checked for auto change, music, or anything. Because I know I'm only using this map for the cutscene. And I want the same song to continue to play. So just make sure that that is not checked for this screen. If you're following along and doing it exactly the same way, um, just do it that way. So we'll zoom out and we'll pick a, uh, a tile. We're going to create another event. I like to use one that's out of the way. Uh, we'll call this one scroll map. And we want the trigger again to be an auto run event. And then uh, this one is pretty straightforward as well. Um, we're not changing the music, so we can just uh, start straight away with the scroll map command, which is on page two, right here. Uh, scroll map. Now, um, the distance and stuff might be a little confusing, so I'll do my best to explain it. Basically, um, in this case, we're using the transfer player event to move the player from the black screen to the ruins. We can't see the player because we turn the transparency on, but the player is still on the map, and it's going to center the camera around where the player is. So, the distance is the number of tiles to move away from that position, whichever direction you want. So we're going to move down. We're going to move down six tiles, and I know for a fact that for for me normal is a little too fast. But we'll leave it just so you get an idea, and just just to show you. I mean, you can go really, really slow or really, really fast. Uh, we'll leave it on normal for now. So we're going to move down six, and then we'll move to the right um, the same number, and we'll leave the speed the same. I mean, that's really all we need to do with this event. And then uh, the only other thing we need to do here is do another transfer event and then close it out. So uh, we'll use another transfer player event. And this time we want to go to the town or wherever you decide you want your cutscene to end. And I'm going to put my player here on this tile. Um, I believe he's going to be facing down by default, but I just want to make sure that he's down at this point. So I'm going to change the direction to down. So we're scrolling the map, we're scrolling the map, and then we're transferring the player because that's all we really wanted to accomplish. At this stage of the game here, you could do whatever you want. You could throw some text in there. You can have the scrolling text. Um, if you started up top with the scrolling text, and you can have the camera running at the same time, um, moving around and stuff. So just play around with it uh, however you want to. But um, uh, let's close out this event here. We do that with another self switch. Um, you know, just use uh, the same, you know, the default stuff. Create a new page, self switch A on as usual, and we're done with that event. So let's test everything up until this point to make sure everything is going correctly. Now, when we get to the town, uh, we're not going to see the player, so don't be alarmed when you don't see him right away. Uh, let's go ahead and save it and check it out. I'm going to fast forward the text because uh, there we go. And there's 
and there it is I mean that's pretty much all you really need to do there I mean that's it uh, one thing that uh, you need to accomplish here now that we're into the town we need to show the player again uh, but before we do that let's uh, open up the properties since this is the point where our cutscene is over um, I'm going to make sure that the auto change background music is selected to play the town music so that we don't keep hearing the cutscene song because our cutscene's over um, you know so just make sure that's checked and uh, the only other thing we have to do now is create an event uh, you know we'll call it show player we'll make it an auto run and the literally the only thing you have to do is on page two change transparency we want transparency to be off and then we want to close out the event with another self switch pretty easy and we'll create a new event page and there you go that is done let's try it out and there's that again I'll fast forward through that And there you go. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, like I said before, this is just meant to give you a foundation, just to get you familiar with those commands so that you can use what you've already learned if you followed along in tutorial 7 and 10 to kind of use all these things combined to make your own nice looking cutscene. So uh, I think next time we're going to cover maybe having multiple characters moving at the same time. Uh, maybe I'll do another uh, party change. Um, you know, we'll, I'll, I've got some things kind of in the works already, but uh, hopefully this video really helps you out. Now, like I said, it's not meant to be a uh, whole solution, start to finish cutscene. Uh, I want to keep this video short. So try it out. Uh, Rewatch, uh, you know, tutorials 7 and 10 again if uh, you're a little rusty on that and, and kind of combine everything together and uh, see what you come up with. So, with all that said, I just want to take a moment and thank you guys for watching again. Uh, your support is really what the only thing that's keeping this thing going. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, s send me links to your projects. I want to see them and, and uh, let me know in the comments down below uh, what you want to see. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.